Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes. And once again, I am joined by royalty of the British film industry. Uh, I've had Sarah Alexandra Marks on, and now today I bring on her co-star, Sophie Rankin. Thank you so much for coming on the channel today. Hey, and thank you so much for having me. It's a real honor to get to talk to you today. So I'm looking forward to it, and thank you to everyone who's watching. Thank you again, Sophie. So <laughs> let's uh, let let me get right into this because. The review for Escape is out now on the channel. I've made no so, no secret of the fact that I really, really love this movie. But it's quite visceral. So what was it that drew you to the script and the movie originally? Oh, yeah. So um, I love action movies and I love thrillers. Um, anything which allows me to like run around and show off some of my martial arts skills, because I have a gymnastics and martial arts kind of background, I'm automatically drawn to <laughs> and on top of that I knew this female this uh, film sorry focused on like female empowerment and I knew it was like a revenge movie and I loved that aspect of it and I loved yeah. how like action packed it was and I love how um, fast paced it was and of course I was really excited to work with um, Howard J Ford who's also a good friend of mine so we've been talking about working together for a while so it was really great to get to work with him as I know how immensely talented he is and how yeah, how impressive um, all his films always are. So I knew it was going to be something mm. really special when um, when we started working together on it. That's awesome. Uh, just a quick side note, what, what martial art is it, you know? Because I'm also big into martial arts. Oh, no way. So I did a lot of um, taekwondo and also stage combat. Um, okay. It was, it was more to, you know, help with my acting and something cool to put on my sure. CV. Um, but I have, mm -hmm. yeah, quite a history of martial arts. And I grew up doing uh, gymnastics, uh, competing at quite a high level. So um, that's always helped me a lot within movies. But I always tell people now, if you need me to do something crazy, like a backflip, just give me a good one month's warning as I don't compete anymore. So <laughs> I need a good one month <laughs> practice to like stretch so I don't kill myself. But then we are good to go. <laughs> you heard it here first. Give Sophie a month and she'll be her own stump woman. <laughs> exactly yes yes month is all i need <laughs> then it's it. game on <laughs> game on um so we, we were talking just a moment ago off camera about you know some of the upcoming projects which i'll, I'll keep quiet about obviously but and we, we were talking about you know kind of reinventing the wheel and making sure that things aren't misogynistic right which this movie of course is not and that's kind of what i want to tap into now so traditionally female roles in these movies they've been quite minimalist sexualized or basically just there for gore's sake your role set you kind of well not kind of your role did set you apart from this and set you up as basically a, a badass like you were the one who is you know getting all vengeful and going to town on the on the bad guys here oh, yeah. how proud are you of what you've contributed to the genre and how do you see it moving forward with regards to women's roles in the genre I'm honestly like so, so proud of my role in this. I loved every second of it. And I think exactly what you said is so spot on. I think it has taken the genre to a whole new level because I think very stereotypically, a lot of horror movies are very misogynistic. You And you can tell automatically from reading a horror script that they've very much been written <laughs> um, by a guy or maybe yeah. to, you know, um, relay some kind of sick fantasy of, you know, a girl um, minimally dressed, covered in blood and, you know, a typical damsel in distress role, like very much um, being victimised and it's a bit yep. sick really <laughs> to be honest with you, like um, yep. <laughs> gonna put it out there it's kind of sick, so um, <laughs> so yeah, so this I think definitely spins things around very much and it does uh, create like a real element of female empowerment where Yes, of course, my character does very much begin as a victim. Um, but then, of course, she very much turns things around and she gets revenge on all these horrible men. And, of course, the men mm. are also showing the worst possible light. So it's like, it's I, I don't want you know people to think that we think all guys are like this. We do not. <laughs> no. But, like, the men in this movie, they are basically, like, the worst possible type of men. Obviously, that anyone yep. can imagine and that's kind of um what Howard was going for he used you know every kind of disgusting comment that he'd ever heard about a girl um you know connotations of just complete sexual exploitation and 
everything and he put all of that into these disgusting barbaric characters but he did it in a very comedy kind of comedy way so we had obviously the guy with the one eye <laughs> and it kind of made oh. these characters kind of very funny and made them kind of more comedy yeah. villains which um, makes it very watchable and makes it more entertaining than repulsive <laughs> yeah, so well, I think 100%. that was very clever a hundred percent. And that's why I said it's a kind of love letter to Grindhouse, because it's got these pastiche villains that get their comeuppances. I mean, and listen, as the guy between the two of us, if you haven't seen Escape, I'll completely back what Sophie's saying now. And it's not because I'm blowing smoke and she's sitting here next to me. And, oh, it's another <laughs> man hating movie. No, 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 no. These are rapists and human traffickers. These are bad people. Like, yeah. put it this way without spoiling what happens to the main villain at the end, something oh, really horrible <laughs> happens to yeah. him. And, and obviously it made me squeam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it made me squeam, but there wasn't a part of me that thought you've gone too far. I was like, no, no, you deserve everything you're getting here. <laughs> like, exactly. This is comeuppances. A hundred percent. And the funny thing is I got so into the character that on like every filming day, I was like, Howard, who can I kill today? <laughs> <laughs> like Sophie calm it down and I, just, I really genuinely enjoyed all of all of my scenes so much and the end scene I'm a particular fan of so yes um I definitely recommend all the viewers to yes but pay extra attention to the end scene I very much enjoyed it and I think a lot of people men and women will very much in, well men I suppose they might definitely find it more squeamish than women but I think yeah. a lot of men and women will enjoy that scene <laughs> because they will know how deserving it, it was. So, yes. Well, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Listen, it's not something as a male I'm going to rush back and watch for the, you know, the squeamish reasons <laughs> you just said. But, but yeah, I <laughs> completely echo that. Th these are comeuppances that are very much deserved. So, I really thought you were great in this film. Like, I really, Thanks. really thought you were great. The, the way you navigated Thanks. kind of going, as you said, from victim to now you must all pay. Um, I thought that was great. <laughs> yes. You re you really tapped into some inner <laughs> anger. How did you prepare for that? Um, that's a good question. I think um, I did just very much imagine these things were happening to me and how how I would react, how I would feel in real life if they were. And I think for me, when you are playing a really um, like you know a role that does require you to convey such a high level of emotion, you really do have to just put yourself in that character's shoes and imagine that's really happening and I was just picturing how I would feel if I really was running for my life and what I would actually do to survive and probably the anger I would also feel imagining that these disgusting men had done all these things to other girls mm. and to other women and I think those thoughts can really you know twist someone's personality and can make you do things that you probably never in a million years thought you were capable of and I think the human mind and the human body is capable of so much and when you're when your body is, you know, just pumped with adrenaline, there's probably yeah. very few limitations to what you can actually do because obviously it's a, it's our human desire to, to survive. So I was trying to really channel that within all of the scenes. Yeah, 100%. Um, so this is quite different from the other things I've seen you in and in some of your upcoming roles. So you've obviously got a huge range of what you can do on screen, but to get into your various characters, be it for Escape or for your other movies, what's your creative process when you prepare? Um, so I always, um, always obviously make sure I know the lines impeccably well. <laughs> and then I do, when I do very much, um, just very much try to become that character. Um, I also do a lot of research usually before, um, before I get into a role. So um, if there's a particular um, sort of theme within the film I'll try to google that theme so I'm really familiar um, like with it so I have even more of an understanding of maybe the backstory of that character what she may have gone through so I kind of understand um, things mm -hmm. related to her life more in depth and I always feel that helps me to, to bring the character more to life as well nice and with that creative process I mean th this isn't actually part of it but you've just triggered an extra question for me the are, are there any sort of 
atypical roles that are on your bucket list of things that, oh, I really want to play that type of role. Like, I don't know, I really want to convey someone who's on the spectrum or I really want to convey someone who's got, I don't know, like a, a war injury or someone who's a survivor of X, Y, Z. Is there, is there something that you're like, I, that's that's where, where I want to be. That's the role I want to do one day. Yeah, so um, there's a couple of roles I'd love to play. One of them is probably a superhero character, just because I think it would be so much fun. You know, you get to run through the sky and kick ass, and it would just be so much fun to get to save the world. So it would be fun to play like a superhero type hero character. And I think um, another character I'd love to play is probably someone who's maybe um, escaping from like a war. Um, so maybe something more like... Uh, uh, date wise more that's set back mm. back in time um, because I think that type of character would be very very interesting to play so a character based on real life events because I think mm. it's just so hard and un unbelievable to imagine what you know some people in the world must have gone through um, war victims people who have actually managed to escape from wars and survive and how they must have felt what they must have gone through is just almost thankfully it's almost like you know, beyond what we can like really imagine. So I think playing that type of role would be really, really interesting and something I'd like to convey mm. on screen as well. Nice, really nice. So again, let, let, let's circle back now to Escape and we were talking about what these men do and pulling the curtain back here with the casting process. Now, I know you said you wanted to work with Howard J. Ford, but I, I can't understand some of the things that, the casting involves as a male so this is very much deferring to your expertise as a as a woman here so obviously one of the big things that they talk about that the actual kidnappers say in this movie is the girls need to have great asses right like that's in the script <laughs> yes. so w when you're reading this as a woman are you kind of <laughs> breaking the fourth wall going up with do i qualify or you, and and how do you think how do you make sure that that sort of stuff stays one within your boundaries of, of comfort and two that it remains tasteful yeah so funny enough um with with the escape film when i was actually the mm. very first actor to be cast in it um funny enough so uh, myself and howard had always planned to work together um for a long mm. time but then i emigrated for a while and we were always kind of filming things at different times so he always knew that i was gonna i was going to be in escape um, as one of the leads and then uh, basically so we didn't have a script to begin with um, a lot of our ideas initially were actually quite collaborative and then of course um, Howard obviously you know um, sort of adapted and developed everything um, with a vengeance came up with this amazing script and he asked me if some of the things I would be happy with and a couple of the things I'd also kind of already thought of and I was like hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially with the end scene um I was like straight away I was like yes I absolutely want to do that and <laughs> can I be the one to do it <laughs> and he was like yes definitely so um yeah um however going back to what you said if obviously it had been a, a more sort of normal route and I had have seen the script beforehand and I had a sort of you know read all of that then I probably mm. um I think I, I probably would have had some questions for him. <laughs> but yeah. I think I um I think I would have realized that there was a real comedic edge to a lot of the vocabulary um, in the script. So it, it would it definitely wouldn't have bothered me. And also knowing um what my role entailed and how it was very much a female uh, driven female empowerment uh, revenge movie. Yeah. I um I wouldn't have had um any issue with that. I was definitely all for everything um within the script and everything that went on in the film like a hundred times over oh sure 100 percent. and as as i said i thought it was done tastefully because of the fact that as you said ultimately it ends with the women kicking ass and getting their revenge <laughs> and it is ultimately yeah. a movie about female empowerment <laughs> but i mean it must be something that's quite hard to navigate I guess to some for some degree for men in hollywood or but mostly for women actually just saying like hey look boundary like <laughs> yeah. you know enough gratuitous butt shots type thing it's yeah. is, is there yeah. is there some sort of actor's code where you like i don't know raise an eyebrow or flick your hair where it's like that's my stop sign yeah 
So with Howard, it, he always um, he always would ask all of us um, whether or not we're happy with something before even putting it in the script. Um, and nice. a lot of the time, well, um, we were the ones who would be like, okay, do this or do this. And the butt shots <laughs> I also requested because I'd been very busy doing a lot of squats before filming. So I wanted to show off, <laughs> you know, my escape physique. So I was very down with the butt shots. <laughs> Good for you. I think Thank you've you. just given me a nice little Instagram reel for that. I was down with the butt shots. <laughs> I was down with the butt shots. I, mean, I was the point down of, with you the butt shots. I really, I really worked out for the escape movie, so I, I wanted my good work to be to be revealed. It, on I worked for that butt. With <laughs> I worked for that butt, exactly. <laughs> Appreciation for the butt. It was needed. I love that. I, lo- I love your, <laughs> your, your candidness about that. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so a lot of the time creatives talk about how real people or real events influence the characters that they put that they appear that appear in their work, um, or indeed maybe influence their work. Who, if any, were the inspirations for you in not so much the whole character itself because it's a very unique character you're playing, but the inspirations for getting some of those emotions out, like getting some of the anger out or getting some of the vengefulness out. What were some real life inspirations for you? Oh, for me, so um, I had genuinely been in a very bad relationship a very long time ago. So I think um, having gone through certain things within that relationship, I think that definitely helped me to convey a lot of the kind of emotions which I did convey uh, within obviously the backstory of my character. So that mm. definitely helped me um, a lot with that. Um, and also I feel I very much um, brought a lot of my kind of the, my own uh, personality <laughs> into my character. Obviously not fully, don't get me wrong. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but sure. Then, like, um, I think Lucy, the character I played, um, she was very determined. She's very straight talking. She's also very confident. And I possess mm. those qualities in real life. So I think um that was definitely a little a little ounce of my own personality within my character as well which definitely was made it easier for me to to play her <laughs> nice very cool what was the most challenging part of this production and how did you overcome it oh um i would say that's a really good question I'm trying to think of thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of what the answer is um the most challenging so to be honest i just li- i literally loved every second of filming this so I'm trying to think of a particular time which I did which I did find challenging because it was just so amazing to make I mean we were so lucky we were filming um in the Canary Islands in the most beautiful mm. of locations and we also filmed in France and the UK so that was really amazing um I'd say okay the most challenging uh, maybe maybe one of the days so we were filming oh actually this yes so we were filming <laughs> just come back to me now We were filming in a cave (laughs) and all of a sudden the weather was just absolutely insane, like teeming with teeming with heavy rain. And we just weren't completely prepared for this sort of weather change at the time. And obviously myself Mm. and Sarah were in very minimal clothing, kind of like huddled together, like cuddling, trying to keep warm. And um, (laughs) so, yeah, we were very, very cold that day. And we were trying to think of sort of a way around how we can still film um, you know, with the weather, like how it is, and a few of you know the rocks in the caves were getting a little bit slippery as well. So I'd say that day was a little bit challenging. But Howard is so resourceful, so he's always like one step ahead of the game, one step ahead of the weather. So um, we made it work. But that was um, initially quite a challenge. I believe it. Um, yeah. I, I, speaking of challenges, I imagine the desert environment must have been quite hard to film in because, I mean, there's so few. I mean, there's okay obviously throughout Hollywood history there's been a lot of desert movies but as a grand total there aren't that many movies shot in the desert because they impose certain difficulties and you're running through the desert for a big chunk of this movie so how did you prepare to, how did you prepare to work in that type of environment actually that's true um do you know what funny enough as you were asking me that question I remembered a genuine very quite intense challenge which I was faced with and this was uh, going way back when we initially filmed yeah. the original teaser, which um, I was actually the only actor in. <laughs> and during that time, <laughs> I had actually, just before filming, um, I'd actually hurt my leg. 
So um, I remember messaging oh, Howard and just being like, by the way, let yourself and the people out there know that I actually am currently limping. And in two days time, I knew I was going to have Ooh. to run through the desert. And I knew that there were a huge amount of, <laughs> of the teaser was going to be me running through like really narrow, uh, sort of like narrow caves in between, sorry, narrow canyons. Yeah. And I was very worried about that. So um, I remember booking like an emergency physio appointment the day before I flew <laughs> to the Canary Islands. And even when I landed at the airport, in Canary Islands, I was still limping. So that was definitely the most challenging aspect of it for me. Um, but when it came down to it, my first day of filming, I sort of just to kind of went like, okay, mind over matter. <laughs> You're not in pain, everything's fine, just run. <laughs> so I kind of just made myself continue running. And somehow it was really weird and miraculous. It kind of just gradually healed and thankfully didn't make my leg any worse. <laughs> Mm. but that was a very big challenge um and yeah it, uh, filming in the desert um as you mentioned before was a challenge in itself because it gets very windy so a lot of the time there was mm. a lot of wind kind of sorry a lot of uh, sand kind of blowing around in the wind um so me and Sarah were constantly kind of uh, <laughs> like fixing our eyes <laughs> desandifying ourselves so that was a definite challenge and it gets very cold um at night time as well and it's very hot during the day so yeah. um that was a challenge, but uh, thankfully, because of the months we filmed in, it, the weather was usually um, was usually fine. Um, we just had to be yeah, a little bit worse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, okay. And there was one day. Tell me. I just remember. I'm sorry, I just remember. No, no, tell me. When we were actually driving in the desert, and the car that we were driving in fell in a ditch, that was another challenge. So we then had to find Ooh. a way to get the car out of the ditch and it, that was insane and I remember I was with Howard and also um, a local uh, from the Canary Islands who was sort of helping us around and the pair of them basically got out these like giant sticks and were kind of trying to catapult the car out of the ground mm. as I dug a hole and it, <laughs> so that was quite hilarious but we managed so that was good the things you have to go through <laughs> as an actor <laughs> oh yes, <the> <laughs> digging holes. So, in yeah, exactly right. Well, they do this next question. They do this a lot in GQ, so I wanted to try it with you and kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this as a continuity with everyone who I interview. Could you give yeah. me your movie Mount Rushmore, like your four favorite movies? I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but and you've had no oh, time gosh. to prepare this answer. Your Rushmore of movies say... and okay. go on. And I can't say films I've been in. <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever you want. I'm not going to throw shade at you. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, then I'll have to choose films I've been in. Escape, number one. Dark Game, two. Three, maybe Ouija Castle. That's an epic one as well. Got to watch that. Or maybe Bermondsey Tales. <laughs> Good girl, I love that. Michael Head, shout aside, out to you. <laughs> but aside from them, um, I actually love Disney movies, I have to say, and I love comedies. Um, I love the new Mean Girls movie, which is a musical, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love comedy movies. That they are, that's comedy is my favorite genre. Did you know, as a Disney girl, did you know that the actress, sorry, actor who played uh, Janice was the voice of Moana? <gasps> no, I, I'm a terrible Disney fan. I did not know that. <laughs> that's Ali crazy. Carvalho, yeah. that's, that's mad. I must go back and watch that film again just to decide what <laughs> that's mind-blowing my mind is blown. it's crazy yeah really? it's crazy it's literally <laughs> the whole time she was singing i was like i know that voice from somewhere i know it was like a sophie <laughs> rankin moment I, like, I know this face from somewhere i know this i know that voice from somewhere <laughs> and then it credits came up at the end i was like oh it's moana there you go um that's what about some she, she is. She absolutely is. I feel a bit annoyed that they're not casting her in the live action movie, to be honest, but still Yes. Um, I know. I, feel the same, I know. I think she's that is a shame. Yeah. What, what about some hidden gem movies you've seen that you think not enough people have seen? Oh, hidden gem movies. Um, let's think. I'm trying to think of the, la the last movie I, I know everyone will have seen that. The last film I watched was Tomb Raider. <laughs> and I <laughs> no, it's a bit weird. And I remember I, this was like 
three days ago and I was just surprised that I had personally never seen this movie because it's such an awesome kind of action thriller movie so but probably the world I think to be honest with you probably everything I've seen everyone else has <laughs> probably Everyone's seen many seen years before enough. I've seen them <laughs> so I'm, this, this, um, <laughs> I'm probably the wrong person <laughs> to ask that question to um, fair enough which two made the yeah. alicia vikander or the angelina jolie one the uh the first one yeah not the angelina first one the, the jolie one, one. Yeah. yeah but um i actually i have a huge list of movies that i really really want to watch and to tell you the truth my life is is insane and i travel non-stop and i'm always working and i which is <laughs> and i rarely actually have time to watch as many movies as i'd like to because i absolutely love movies obviously so i read yeah there's so many that i'm still yet to watch which i still really plan to and yes would love to when my life's your biggest mo- so what's your biggest okay this is interesting now now you've given me a really fun question what would you say your biggest movie blind spot or embarrassment is like a massive movie that everyone's seen that you're like oh i'm ashamed but i haven't seen that one what are we <laughs> talking wizard of oz jurassic park casablanca jaws go on Jaws, yes. Jurassic Park, yes. Oh. I've not seen either of them. I know, see? Terrible. Yes, very bad. Oh. And a lot of like very classics. I, I've seen a few, but I've, I, yeah, there are many um, classic movies, like by Alfred Hitchcock, for example, and I have not seen all of them, which I think as an actor is bad, and I should definitely make sure I, <laughs> I watch them all. <laughs> all available on BBC iPlayer. No sponsorship for that one. Amazing. <laughs> That'll be my homework for tonight then. Watch more movies. Watch more movies, always. Um, And that's actually a really good note to end on. So watch more movies is the gist of this interview from both of us. Um, Sophie, just before you leave, can we get a little insight into what your next projects are and where people can uh, find and follow you online, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm currently working on a movie called Mermaid's Curse 2. Um, which is it's it's really an awesome movie. It's for ITN, um, and it's being directed by uh, Pilar Manoy. Uh, she's an amazing director, and she's such a lovely person as well. And it's being produced by Chap Dog Films. And I played the lead role in that film as Serena. And it's a mermaid horror fantasy film. So um, definitely watch out for that. Um, I've done a couple of other movies through ITN as well. Hook and also Ouija Castle, and they have a really fast turnaround. So that will be released very soon. Um, as we've actually nice. we've just just finished filming that and I've also just finished filming a movie called Meeting Across the River um, by Michael Head and Michael is absolutely amazing um, he is yeah one of my favorite people to work for um, he's really incredible absolutely lovely human and um, yeah him and Rachel Rachel's his wife she usually um, produces and they're just such an incredible team such lovely people and that one is being directed by Frank Harper and mm-hmm. um, he's also obviously immensely talented. And I play a character in it called Stevie. And it's a gangster film with a good element of comedy going on. And I think it's honestly going to be a really epic, very unique movie. And I absolutely love my role in it. So, yeah, um, please watch out for that. Um, that will be coming soon as well. And you can follow me Co-sign. on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Sophie Louise Rankin. And also you can keep an eye on my IMDb, which is Sophie Rankin. Sophie, thank you so much again for the time you've given me on the channel today. I really appreciate it. Big fan, as you knew already before we started recording. Um, Did my best not to get too starstruck. But yeah, really, really thank you for coming (laughs) and joining me today. And uh, I'm sure it's not going to be the last time we speak. There's a huge career ahead for you. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much. And it's been amazing to chat with you today. And I definitely hope we can talk again very soon. So thank you so much for having me on your channel. I look forward to it, Sophie. And to everyone, as always, please do hit the subscribe button. The review for Escape is out now on the channel. Go and support it. Watch my review first and you'll see why I'm telling you to go and support it. But as always, I'm going to end with this note. Support British independent cinema. The stars of tomorrow are developing before your very eyes. Go and support the stars of tomorrow and the stars of today, even as they grow. So thank you as always to everyone for watching, and I'll see you right here on the channel very soon.